Shalom, peace, hotel, assalamu alaikum, praise the Lord. So tonight's message is going to be about um, discipline in our children. Um, I got some notes tonight, so it'll be um, free-flowing, or it won't be free-flowing. It'll be in some type of order. We do all things with decency and in order. So, um, let's start with Proverbs chapter 13. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline. This is one of those familiar passages that we always hear. But whoever spares the rod hates their children, but for those who love their children is careful to discipline them. Next verse, Proverbs 19, 18. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. So what they're saying is, if we love them, we'll discipline them. Because we know that on the other side of, of that discipline, there's a promise. And if we don't discipline them, the world will. So this verse says, discipline your children, for in that there is hope. There is hope that they'll, they'll be successful. There is hope that they'll be protected. There is hope that they'll make it to a place that, that if you wish you was able to go at an earlier age. So Proverbs 19 18 says, Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. So do not be a willing participant in their death. That's what we get from not sparing a ride and Proverbs 23, 13, and 14. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. So if you punish them, you know, in our time, a lot of times it's a belt. You know, sometimes, you know, at younger ages, it's the hand. So that's the rod, and that's, you know, the belt in your hand, that's the rod. So it says, do not withhold discipline from a child. Because if you withhold, if you punish them with the rod, they will not die. They won't die from the belt. They won't die from you. You know, you can your hand. Verse 14. Punish them with the rod and save them from death. So in fact, by punishing them, you're actually saving them from death. Um, from my own life story, you know, my mother, I probably got one whooping in my whole life. However, I believe that with more discipline, um, it would have saved me from a lot of other things that I had to bump my head um, in this life. So, as a father, those are the things that, that I chose. I've chosen to follow this ancient path, follow this ancient way. Um, from one of the wisest men to ever walk the planet, which is King Solomon. So, moving on. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. And I read, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. But what children are not disciplined by their fathers? It's a question. So again, it says, endure hardship as discipline. So when it's taking um, the thought process away from, um, you know, us as um, discipline our children, and we become the children, we become a child like, be as a little child as the Bible says. So we are the child, but whose child are we? We are the most high child. So it's saying endure hardship. So when we're going through hardship, in our life as parents, as adults, as young men, young women, is discipline. Look at that hardship as discipline. It says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. But what children are not disciplined by their father? So what children that don't get disciplined by their father? Then it goes on to read, if you are not disciplined, then you are not legitimate. Not true sons 
and daughters at all. So what children not disciplined by their fathers? And if you're not disciplined by your father, then you're not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. That's clear. I really don't even got to elaborate on that verse. Verse 9. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more? How much more shall we submit to the Father of spirit and live? So we've all had fathers that have disciplined us, whether it's been a coach, whether it's been um, a grandfather, whether it's been an uncle, whether it's been um, an older cousin. Um, we've all had those people that have disciplined us as a father. So how much more should the Most High, the Creator of the Spirit, um, that we should follow? We should follow His will and live. Hebrews 12 and 10, it says, They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share in his holiness. So just like we discipline our children for a little while as we thought was best, it's the same thing with God when he disciplined us as his children. He disciplined us as his children for our good. So he's given us hardships. Take those hardships as the discipline. Uh, he's given us those hardships for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. Like they say, Christ was disciplined. He went through many hardships. But he was one of the most holy beings to ever walk the face of the earth. So, we may share in that glory. We may share in that holiness by the discipline that we go through, by the hardship that we go through. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So those that have been trained by this discipline and trained by these hardships, it will produce righteousness. It's painful at the time when we're going through this thing. It's very painful. You know, so when we discipline our children, it's painful for us to discipline our children at times. But we know that this discipline, not sparing a rod, will produce, it will produce righteousness in our children. But it's the same thing for us. It will produce righteousness in us by going through those things. It will produce, like the scripture says, righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Those who have been trained by discipline, it will produce righteousness and peace. But it's painful when you're going through. So, Deuteronomy, next step the next scripture, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 8, chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. And the reason why we're going through scriptures and jumping around, bouncing around, because the Bible says, um, by two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So, we're going to multiple people. Um, to prove a point, to bring out a point, to, to let the word be established, to gain the understanding of what Allah or God or Yahuwah, whatever you call the Most High, he's trying to reveal to us in his holy text. So Deuteronomy um, chapter 8, verse 5 and 6 says, Know then in your hearts that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. So know in your heart. Your heart is synonymous to the mind. So, knowing your heart, knowing your mind, that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. That word revering means respecting him. So, as as, you, as a father would discipline a child, we should discipline our children. But we should expect for the most high discipline us as well. So as we going through those hardships, we'll discipline our children. 
Maybe that's our teaching. Maybe that's our lesson. Maybe that's our hardship for God to help us grow. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. Back in Hebrews. It says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. A lot of times we go on these jobs. We go on... Um, Go into places where we have to be around different people. We're not living like hermits and cutting off the world. So we need to make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Holy means to be set apart, to be different. You know, um, as one said about the, the, the clean glass of water. You know, if you got a clean glass of water and then you got a dirty glass of water. That's how you make it simple. Make it easy for people to choose which one they should drink out of. So be set apart. Be holy. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and to defile many. So that's a lot in that. You know, we want to make sure that we don't fall short of that grace that God has given us. And let that bitter root that that bitter root to grow within us and defile us. So how does that look? So a lot of times we go through different situations in life and it creates bitterness, it creates anger. For example, like, you know, personally so when I when I've been going through you know the custody situation with, with my ex-wife, sometimes it creates bitterness. But I don't allow it to take root because if that bitterness takes root, it'll defile me. It'll make me want to go out and do whatever because of my bitterness towards the situation. So this this, this passage says, "See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up." And no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. A stop for lot. Lord forgive us if we've been defiled by that bitterness at some point in time. A stop for lot just means um, a way to ask God for forgiveness. So moving on. We're almost done. Second Peter, um, chapter three. Uh, verses 4 through 8. So first, um, the first verse, well, you know, verse 4, it says, To these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. So through, through these disciplines, through these hardships, he has given us his very great and precious promises. So through these disciplines, at the end of every discipline, there's a promise. So with every hardship, if we can be disciplined through that hardship, there's a promise. It says, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. That divine nature is what all of us have, that light of Allah, that light of um, Yahuwah, the light of God. We had that light when we first entered into this realm. Blindly, sinless, pure as a baby, as they say. So that divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So if these disciplines are supposed to give us um, the understanding to help us um, escape the world through corruption and the evil desires. The reason why man lost that, lost that divine nature was because of desire. But that's a whole nother story, and I wanna, don't want to go through that rabbit hole tonight. So, verse 5. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. So, your faith in God, add goodness. And to goodness, knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. So, when you have faith, you should start to add good. Then, once you have that faith and then you have goodness, you should be adding knowledge and to that knowledge you should be having self-control because now you have knowledge you know better when a man knows better he does better you know 
Uh, so this word right here, it cuts, it's, it's like a double-edged sword, like the Bible speak of. It's going to cut you coming in and it's going to cut you going. So this, this word is supposed to be refining us. This word is refining me. It cut me, so I'm putting it out so it can cut somebody else so you can grow. So, and to goodness, knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, perseverance. So after you have self self-control, now you got to persevere with that. Don't grow weary and well doing. And to perseverance, godliness. So now when you don't grow weary and well, well doing, you got that perseverance, then you add godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection. So that godliness is, you know, God, hey, we didn't we didn't mess up a long time. And God just kept waiting, waiting, and he just keep allowing us to repent. And so after we put on that godliness, we need to have mutual affection. And I was talking to um, my Isha or my wife about, you know, being partial. And so being partial, so that mutual affection, being able to have mutual affection for all people. But that's godliness. And that's a hard thing to do, especially, especially when you have so many distractions. You got so many things. You got um, bitterness that takes root. So you still got to have that mutual affection. You got to have that godliness. And after you have mutual affection, you need to have love. So the top on all that, those things, you start in those things, then you put love on the top. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's verse 8. So 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 says, For if you possess those qualities, those qualities of faith, goodness, um, knowledge, perseverance, godliness, mutual affection, if you possess those, these qualities in increasing measure, so that means that it's levels, it's levels to, to, to those um, qualities. We can have a little bit of faith. We can have a little bit of goodness. We can have a little bit of knowledge. We can have a little bit of self-control, a little bit of perseverance. But if we possess those qualities in increasing measure, so meaning that it's continually increasing, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge. So they'll keep you from being unproductive in what you already know. In your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we deal with that word Lord, that word Lord actually means the activity of the spiritual I am as the ruling consciousness. The Lord God of the scriptures is Christ in every being. The Lord God of the scriptures is Christ in every being. Our divine consciousness, the creative power within us. So when the scripture is saying, in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's saying he wants us to be effective and productive in the divine nature and the Christ that's within us. So that was my last scripture. But while we're dealing with that word, Lord, we're going to give you the definition of Christ real quick. And we're going to close. So, bear with me. So, the word Christ. is the incarnating principle of, of the God human. The perfect word or idea of God. So, Christ is the perfect word, perfect idea of God which unfolds into the true human and is blessed with eternal life by measuring up to the divine standard. So the divine standard, so Christ is you measuring up to the divine standard. Christ measured up to the divine standard. That's why we want to take on that divine nature like we were talking about earlier. So we take on those things of goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, perseverance, 
godliness uh, and mutual affection and then love because Christ is love we can measure up to that divine standard I'm just going to say it we become the Christ because Christ is the title Christ is the divine energy in human beings Jesus is the name that represents the individual expression of the Christ idea the Christ existed long before Jesus the Christ existed long before Jesus. It was the Christ mind in Jesus that exclaimed, So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. That was John 17 and 5. Christ abides in each person as a potential perfection. Christ abides in each person as potential perfection. Jesus Christ, the embodiment of all divine ideas, exists eternally in the mind of being as the only begotten, the Messiah or the anointed one, and is the living principle working in all people. So, Christ is the living, people, living example working in all people. So, when this scripture, um, what was it, Second Peter verse, verse uh, chapter three, verse eight, for, for, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure. They will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just gave you the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is as the divine perfection in our being. So basically, if you take on these qualities, now you become your highest version of yourself. So, just to recap, man, let's discipline our children because we want Allah, we want Yahuwah, we want God to discipline us because if we discipline our children, they will become righteous. There's a promise on the other side of us discipline them. Just like when God disciplines us and give us hardship, there's a promise on the other side of him discipline us. That promise is taking on that divine nature. We want our children to be divine, but in order for our children to be divine and take on that Christ nature and that form, we have to be divine. Peace. Shalom. Hotel. Assalamu alaikum.